When you talk about electromagnetic waves, the waves are properties of an electric and magnetic field. And they're, they can be very long, like radio waves, or they can be very short, like gamma waves. But there's no sense that we have that can perceive them. We can't see them or smell them or touch them or understand the wave behavior. When we look at ocean waves, it's obvious that there is a wave property, and we can see their speed and their uh, wavelengths and their frequencies. But with electromagnetic radiation, you can't. So it'd be nice to be able to demonstrate the wave property in an experiment. Well, with ocean waves, water waves, it's well known when those waves hit obstacles how they behave. So it'd be neat to arrange an experiment where an electromagnetic wave hit some obstacles and displayed those same kind of wave characteristics. So that's what we're going to do. So consider this. We're going to take a slit, a tiny little hole poked in a screen, and shine light through it, and then look far away at a wall or some other screen where that light hits and see what that looks like. So I think you understand this. You take, this is like poking a hole in a pie plate and shining a flashlight through it onto a wall. You know what you'd see. You'd see an image of the hole that you poked, and it'd be diffuse around the edges, and it'd be bright in the center. That's because the light is diffracting and spreading out around the edges of the uh, hole you've poked. That's exactly what I've drawn here. I have a light passing through a, a hole, hitting a screen far away, and I've plotted the intensity distribution. Now this is monochromatic light, so only one wavelength involved. It's not like a flashlight. So it's more like a laser going through a slit. So what you have, though, is the same thing, a bright spot getting dim at the edges that I've plotted out here. So this intensity distribution is just like a probability distribution if it were particles. That is, let's say I shot bullets or BBs or something through a hole. Some of them would tick off the sides here, and they'd spread out, and they'd end out at the fringes. But a lot of them would go right through and hit directly across from the hole. So you'd have a high probability of a particle hitting directly across from the hole, and slightly lower probability as you move away from the hole. So let's look at another slit. We could do the same thing with light, a second slit, and have the same kind of experience where a lot of particles or a lot of waves or a lot of beams hit directly across from the slit. So two slits together is where it gets interesting. When waves interact, that's how we can tell they're waves. And you probably know this by looking at waves in the bathtub or waves on the beach. If there's something in the middle and waves hit them, there's a pattern that's predictable as those waves move away from the obstacle. So this is like an obstacle to, to light waves. And we'll, we'll talk about light in the visible spectrum so you can actually see it. So two slits, the light passes through them. What you might expect first is, well, you'd get a bright spot across from one slit and a bright spot across from the other slit. And it turns out for some wavelength and for some orientation of the slits, that's what you get. But if you arrange the slits appropriately, you get a very distinct pattern. Instead of two strong intensities across from slit A and slit B, what you actually see is a pattern of intensities, light and dark spots that aren't directly across from the slits. So you see bright spot, dark spot, bright spot, dark spot, bright spot, dark spot, alternating away from the center of the slits. The brightest spot is actually right between the slits. So that doesn't look like a particle-like property at all. Particles would never do this. If you shot your BBs or your uh, ping pong balls or something macroscopic through these two holes, you would get a bright spot here and a high probability spot here. So this is a property only of waves. And how can we understand it? Well, it's actually pretty clear. If you think about it, a wave has to travel from the slits to the screen. And if a light has to travel from the slits to the screen, so here's a wave coming from each slit hitting the center. Notice that the distance that this wave has to travel and the distance that that wave has to travel will be the same. So two waves traveling in unison, the same distance, will be in phase. They will be either at a peak or a trough identically because they've traveled the same distance. Now, what about a dim spot up here? 
Well, if you think about a wave traveling from this slit and a wave traveling from this slit, this wave now has a longer distance to travel than this wave. So the one that has the farther path is going to be out of phase somewhat with the one that has the shorter path. So think about that. One wave travels up, down, up, down, up. The other one has a longer path. Up, down, up, down, up, down. So one arrives in an up phase, the other arrives in a down phase. And when you add those two intensities together, what you get is destructive interference. So the waves add to give zero intensity. It's actually really cool, and it's something you can see in the experiments that we'll show you later on. We'll shine a laser through a slit, and we'll actually show you this pattern of light and dark spots. This shows us that electromagnetic radiation is actually a wave.